Hey everybody, in this video we are going to continue our discussion on L1 retro transposons. So, you know, we have all these retro transposons and most are non-functional, so they have mutations or they're not full length. Uh, but but those that are functional can cause mutations. So they can cause mutations uh, typically by inserting into exons of genes, of protein coding genes, or inserting into introns of protein coding genes. So uh, back up a bit just in case you didn't watch the previous video. We are talking about L1 retrotransposons in humans. These are a type of line, uh, long, internu uh, long interspersed element. And and so I say they can cause uh, mutations by inserting into exons or inserting into introns, so they can cause mutations in other ways, but there are at least 25 known uh, insertion events, L1 insertion events, that have led to uh, human disease or human genetic disorders. And in these cases, it was insertion into an exon or insertion into an intron of a, a protein coding gene. And we're gonna take a look at one of these. So there's a genetic disorder called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And there are two forms. So uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, DMD, now this is caused by mutations in the dystrophin gene. So the dystrophin gene is a very uh, it's a large gene. It's about a one million base pairs long. There are I think seventy nine exons, and it's found on the X chromosome. So. And because it's found on the X chromosome, the, the disease, DMD, is uh, more common in males. Or genetic males, right? More common in genetic males. Why? Because, you know, these individuals only inherit one X chromosome. So one X chromosome from, from the mother. And the mother may have, uh, let's say, an X chromosome with, uh, we'll call it X plus and we'll call this one XD for carrying a mutation in the dystrophin gene. And so the mother might not be affected, but she can pass this one allele to the son and the son inherits the Y from the father. So the son only has one allele for the dystrophin gene and is mutated. So if this is a null allele, then DMD develops, Duchenne muscular dystrophy develops. So it has an incidence or frequency of one in 5,000 males has DMD, and it's a pretty uh, terrible disease. So the average lifespan is 26 years old. So essentially it's, it's a muscle uh, degeneration. The disease involves muscle degeneration. So uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a terrible disease, and it usually results when the male inherits a null allele for the dystrophin gene from his mother. So there is a milder form of DMD, which is specifically, specifically called uh, Becker's muscular dystrophy. And we can abbreviate that BMD. So if an individual will have BMD if the dystrophin allele inherited from the mother is uh, partially functional, right? It's not a null allele. So this goes back to when we were talking about our different types of mutations. So a couple of different loss of function mutations, right? 
We can have partial loss of function. And then we can have complete loss of function. So a mutation that causes partial loss of function, okay, well, well the, that means uh, the protein still has some function, some functionality. Whatever it's supposed to do, it can still do that, uh, just not as efficiently as the wild-type version. Complete loss of function, well, we have another name for that. It's a null allele. So if an individual inherits a null allele, Duchenne muscular dystrophy will develop. If the individual inherits a, an allele that's still partially functional but not wild type, well, this usually develops, Becker's muscular dystrophy. And the prognosis for an individual with BMD obviously is better than for an individual with DMD. So in 2018, there was an article in the journal Genes. Now the authors, the first author was Goncalves. I'm not sure how to say that, how to pronounce this C. Goncalves, Goncalves. Uh, so at all 2018 in Genes, essentially they characterize a, a de novo mutation in the dystropho gene. So what does de novo mean? So they think the mutation happened in the maternal germline during possibly during oh genesis and the mutation happened in the dystrophin allele and that was the allele inherited by the the patient who had becker's muscular dystrophy so the patient has uh bmd de novo mutation in dystrophin uh, leads to bmd in this study okay so here is the patient, and in this article, you can see the article in the notes, or, or excerpts from the article in the notes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven siblings. So four boys and three girls. And here are the parents up here. So only this individual right here has BMD. Also, only this individual has the affected allele, the mutant allele. None of the other sons have this allele, which is which indicates that the mother, well, um, I guess the mother could just by chance pass the only the one mutated X allele here and uh, these could all get the wild type version if the mother is a carrier of this allele. But uh, the, in the paper, the scientists say they do sequencing, gene sequencing on all of the siblings in the show. Only this individual here has that, has that one allele, making it likely that the mutation was de novo. I guess it's not, not completely impossible. Um, I, you know, I didn't check the paper to see if they sequenced the mother's uh, dystrophin genes. So if they did that, then they can say for sure that, that this was a de novo mutation in the maternal germline. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that mutation, what exactly it is in a second, what exactly happened. But we have a, a much more extensive family tree, too, showing that no one else has muscular dystrophy. And there was something interesting going on with, with this individual right here. Maybe some form, uh, I'm not sure NMD it had, but you know, uh, we, we could look that up. But apparently the authors think this individual way up here has nothing to do with, with this disorder down here. So the authors did uh, sequencing of the dystrophin allele in all these individu individuals here, and I think they did it up there too, and they only found one mutant. They found this one right here was the only one that had the mutant dystrophin allele. And this individual uh, has an offspring produced with this individual here, and it's a daughter, and we're gonna put that in the middle, and that indicates that she is a carrier carrier for the mutant allele. 
So this individual with the mutant dystrophin gene has only one, right? Because it's on the X chromosome. This is male. He only has only one X chromosome. He had to pass it to his daughter. And yet the daughter is a carrier of that mutant allele. So no one else has the mutant allele, at least for any individual they sequence. And I'm pretty sure they, they sequence the dystrophin genes in the mom here. Okay, so what happened? What happened? So again, this is an L1 insertion event. So the L1 moved the line, line element, the L1 element moved to a new location in the genome and where it landed was the dystrophin gene. Specifically, so there are 79 exons in the dystrophin gene. It landed between exon 51 and exon 52. And we talked about exons and introns earlier in the course. Now, I'm just diagramming that part of the gene. So this is a DNA sequence. And this little rectangle right here is the end of exon one. And the beginning of the intron starts with a GT, right? So this is the five prime consensus sequence for an intron. And the end of the intron ends with an AG. And then we have the start of exon 52 here. Now, the L1 element inserted somewhere about here. And you know what, why don't I diagram the L1 element right here? And we went over this in the last video. So the L1 element has what? A five prime UTR, a sequence for the five prime UTR. ORF1, ORF2 coding region, and a three prime UTR with a, with a poly or a rich adenine rich tract in this region here and I could have made this line go all the way to the end of the L1 element now this is going to insert here and it inserted right next to an AG so there was there's AGs all throughout here right AG dinucleotides all throughout the intron um, there's like, what, what is that, a 1 in 8 chance of having an A and a G if, if the sequence is completely random. Um, but only this one typically forms the, the 3 prime splice site. Only this AG is, is typically used as the 3 prime splice site. However, somehow, scientists still don't quite understand how, how this works or, or why it worked this way, but when this guy inserted into here, that AG inserted right next to an AG and that AG became a new three prime splice site. So now this is gonna be an intron right here. This is the new intron. And then there's right up here, say there's a GT in this sequence. And this GT is gonna become the new five prime splice site for a, another intron. So let me show you this when we dive in this a little neater. So when this is transcribed, or well, I should say what the gene sequence looks like after integration of the L1 element, it looks something like this. So five prime UTR, this is partial, partial. And I'm gonna put this here, I'm gonna show this as a sort of rectangle square type thing here because this is actually part of the, this becomes a new exon. So you might be a little confused, stay with me. So here's that GT right here. This AG right here, well that's right here. That AG was always here. This is where the L1 inserted right next to that AG. That GT right here, that's gonna be right here now. So that forms the start of a new intron. So this sequence, all this stuff right here, that's gonna be found right here. So this is L1 sequence. So this is L1 sequence here. This is the part that actually goes into the messenger RNA. The rest of the L1 sequence is part of the gene, but it's removed now because this GT right here serves as a five prime splice site. And this L1 sequence is removed along with the rest of the dystrophin intron here. 
And then this AG, the original three prime supply site is still used um, as a three prime supply site in this intron here. So we go from having one intron between exon 51 and exon 52 to having two introns, intron one, intron two, and we have another exon. Let's call this exon 51.5. So this is a new exon that exists in the dystrophin gene of this individual right here. So this individual has one dystrophin gene. It was mutated probably during oogenesis. Now has the L1 element inserted in it. And when that gene is transcribed, instead of having one intron being spliced out with the L1 being spliced out, this intron, this the phi prime part of the intron is spliced out. A little piece of the L1 element is, is kept inside the messenger RNA, is an exon now, it's kept in the messenger RNA, and then this part is removed. So after splicing, what do we, this messenger RNA is transcribed, or this gene is transcribed and the RNA is spliced, introns removed. So we have something like this, exon 51. We're gonna call this exon 51.5. We're gonna call this one exon 52. Okay, so when this is translated,